Good morning. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank the organizers for getting me up here. Then, I would like to thank my parents, my teachers, and in fact, a lot of other people whom I owe, probably whom I might have never met, but whose videos I might have watched or whose vlogs I might have read. Talking about people, we have 7 billion people on this planet. That is 7 followed by 9 zeros. Each of us unique in different ways, everyone with different ideas and different inclinations. One of the most difficult things to do with these people is to gather them at one place. Yes, if you have an idea and if you want to gather someone and to be with you, it's a challenge. People don't get convinced so easily. But there have been instances where people have put in lifetime of effort, of goodwill, of work to have gathered people. One of the best examples is Mahatma Gandhi's funeral. This is the funeral of Mahatma Gandhi. And he, he gathered over 2 million people in his funeral. In 1948, when the primary source of transportation was a bullock cart, a steam engine was a transportation for the rich. Look at this, 2 million people. The Kumbh Mela in 2011, 2001 was the largest gathering, peaceful gathering of humans in the history. It gathered over 20 million devotees. And this is phenomenal that how could one idea gather 20 million people. But what fascinates me is this. Look at this fellow, his visa. He is Michael Stevens and he is a YouTuber. And look at the views there. 24 million people. Look, this makes me wonder, how could one person with only 15 days of you know, video recording experience could come up with a video and engage an audience which no uh, event in history could have ever engaged. 24 million people, that is more than the 20 million by Kumbh Mela. And this is just a glimpse of what the internet is and how we have come, uh, come ahead when it comes to gathering people. Look at the swamps. There are 2 billion people who have made accounts on Facebook. Out of them, 1.86 billion are active users. Just look at the potential on how one Facebook engineer could change one thing in their product and 2 billion people could have seen the change instantly. How this is the first time in the history when we can influence 2 7th of the world's population so easily. This is the power of the internet. Instagram, Twitter, Google Plus, LinkedIn, things have been rapidly expanding. And these figures are no less. These are expanding day by day. These figures are growing up. And our power to influence people has increased and is increasing. When these, when these huge companies like Google, when they thought that there were so many people we had on the internet, the first thing they thought was of business. That how could we get them, get money out of them? How we could give us our free products and make them our products by selling their details to the advertisers? Just how can we generate revenue? But there was this other group of people. People like these. The people at MIT, one of the most premier institutes, premier university in the world. What they thought of was that if we have gathered so people at one place, then one of the best thing to do is to educate them. This what is a time in history when we can really educate a civilization and with that spirit in mind MIT launched this website that is the MIT open courseware and this website gave all the content and all what happens in the classrooms of MIT online for free so it was the first time in history that these this knowledge and the great things that happen they do not happen behind the walls of elite institutions but they happen between people with, with us and between people like you and me, anyone with an internet connection and willing to learn can really learn and benefit from these things. This is the website in, when it began. This is it now. They are constantly updating. They are constantly learning from what students teach them. And the students are benefiting. One of the most significant progress occurred when these two professors, Professor Peter Norvig and Sebastian Thrun, from Stanford University decided to put their course, Introduction to Artificial Intelligence, online. This course, it, it was 2011, and I was one person who registered for it. Six days later, 
we got a video response from the instructor saying that we have received over 50,000 registrations from over 180 countries. And this was a chance of life for me. I was a 12 year old then and for me to learn things like artificial intelligence and to learn things like these with people of so much diverse culture, it was a great honor. And this course was a memorable one. Uh, and one of the best things, th this course had this pen and paper approach of teaching, teaching us. And one of the best things this course taught us was how culture shapes us and how really we can get perspective through the internet about culture and about us. If you, uh, after this course happened, these websites came up rapidly. We gave feedback to the professors and later from Stanford to MIT, from your great Ivy League institutes, from all the institutes from UK, from Europe, people's, these courses started emerging. These courses were given a name of MOOC, that is Massive Online Open Courseware, and they became a sensation. The suggestions we gave, the suggestion that a 12 year old I gave in the form, the first MOOC gave, were implemented in these websites. And for me, it was amazingly fascinating how a person like me, who was a 12 year old sitting on his PC, could give us suggestions which would later become a basis of companies as great as these and who could really change civilization and change how we really learn. One of the best things these uh, massive online open course sites gave was their discussion forums. Now these discussion forums are quite interesting. Like if you, if you are a, uh, if you are a professor and if you are teaching to a class of 100 students, discussing and doubt solving is a very easy task. But when you are teaching a class of 50,000 students, say 1 lakh students, it is a huge challenge. So for them, these discussion boards are founded. What these do is, you just, the students pose questions and these questions could be answered by the faculty or by other students. And this really helped so much about me. We, I remember to ask so many questions and there were people from Greece who answered, people from Canada, people from so many different places who really gave perspective upon just one simple thing. One of the best examples is this, this question. Like it was a question in a thing called Java. Java is a programming language and of course would taught this programming language. So we had to complete an assignment. We had to write a program and it outputted a number. Now this gentleman from USA outputted uh, gave an output, but his answer never matched. He worked and he struggled, but his answer would not match. So he came to the discussion forum to ask why is my answer not matching? For him to realize that the comma he put was different from the British. And that's why the answer didn't match. And this is something which is amazing that we are not learning by the bonds of geography and the culture which we have inherited, but we are learning quite globally with everyone and keeping in perspective of what every culture does. So this is quite amazing. Our friends at Cryptography Lab came up with this map. This is MOOC, the map of the, how many people took MOOCs, MOOCs all over the world. Look at the black dots, darker dots. These are our classmates. For people who are like me, I took over 130 MOOCs and I'm 18 now. From 12 years, when the first MOOC was, till now I've been involved in 30 MOOCs and they have been amazing. I have got so many classmates, classmates from the entire world. If you, if you look at this, if you look at this map, one thing you realize is that the world, um, the boundaries of the world have nothing to do to this classroom. The dots show that truly we have become global. In the true spirit, we have nothing like religion, caste, creed, nothing. We have just one learning in perspective. We have broadened our boundaries of the classroom we have removed those boundaries and we have also removed the boundaries of country and of geography. And this is what all the great saints wanted to do. And here we have this. And then for the first time, we, we, really, we really can feel that such so much interconnectivity makes us feel that we are born in an era too late to explore the earth. People have done it before us. Too early to explore other stars. There are no technology for exploring the stars. But we are born at quite the right time to explore culture and explore how others have evolved from us. This gives us the true spirit of that. Uh, but do we have only course related questions? Our questions can be weird. They can vary from who came first, the hen or the egg, or what if, what, what if, what color is a mirror, what not. For that, we have these websites like Stack Overflow, Math Stack Exchange. These websites really give us questions 
So technical answers to all our questions. May it be from computers, from mathematics, there are websites dedicated for English language, for gaming, you name it and you have a website which is dedicated for it. And this is amazing. We bring a community of highly intellectual people with one, one spirit in one knowledge of really expanding horizons of the people and the world around us. And here we do it. One amazing platform that has emerged is Pora. And as we have our speaker, Mr. Balaji Vishwanathan, he has really contributed to the development of this site. And not only him, there have been so many amazing people, Scott Dazzing, Robert Frost, some amazing people from different, different walks of life who have really helped shape this platform. And for teenagers like me, this is the real place to be. So that we do not have the perspectives which the local newspaper or the local magazines gives. Our perspective and our views over things are truly global and this website is the prime reason for that. One of the best things about this website can be illustrated by this example. The question asked was, what do world leaders can be doing to support feminism in the, feminism in the country? And the 23rd Prime Minister of Canada answers this question. This is really amazing. Never before we could reach out to such a, a person of such a magnitude, so such achievement, and, of, and we have done it now. Another good thing is YouTube, and it has really shaped us. Sal Khan of Khan Academy is just one example in the immense huge YouTube of how one person sitting on his desk can really educate a generation and inspire amazing amount of people, no matter what they come from or where they come from. But one of the best things is, what can you give back to this classroom? We are often finding things on the internet. We don't find them. We try to search. We try to search them physically, and then we forget about the thing. But we cannot just leave it like that. What we have to do when we are searching something on the internet, and if we don't find it, what we should do is, we should then, after we have, you know, reconsidered it. So we have understood it. We should post it on the internet. We should like blogs. We should update Wikipedia. We should upload a YouTube video and really add to this knowledge of the internet. Like internet and this whole classroom is not a one-way street. It is a two-way interaction. You give in it and you get out of it. And that can be quite well illustrated by the example of distributed computing. Now, there are these great scientific questions and they have no solution until we try a brute force. There are problems in prime numbers, in a lot of diverse fields, where we really need a lot of computational power to solve them. And not one institute, not one place can have that power. So for that, these distributed computing projects are launched. What these do is, they have this one, one site of there, and anyone in this world can download a software of them, and uh, for them. And with, you can use a little bit of your hardware to contribute in that project. So um, imagine there is this problem of finding the next prime number and it's a hard problem. You require over 2000 years of effort in a single machine to do that. But just imagine if every person on the internet, these 2 billion people on Facebook, did it only for one minute, it will be solved in just five minutes, this problem. And in that spirit, we have this distributed computing project that we just need to down like this. And then we are done. It will work on its background. And then we can be part of projects in science, art, cryptography, even in cancer research, where these great problems are only this computationally short of a solution. So the next time when you are uh, you are contributing, when you are downloading some websites, you can be a part of this great research. You can be that person who could discover the next prime number, who could discover the structure of a protein which no other has figured out. And yes, scientific research is like knowledge not be between the walls of these institutes, but between us. And it is our responsibility to help these people, our responsibility to really work, work out, and give a little bit of our computational resources, bit which we really don't use, but buy when we are looking at a, what which computer to buy to them and really help in the progress of humanity. One of the other things is recapture for it. Every one of you might have taken this. But you know what it is? based upon a company called ReCAPTCHA. What it does is that there are so many books that we want to put it on the internet. We want to do digitalize them. And it is a great challenge. Like computers cannot read these texts. So what you do is, it gives you two words. One word, which is a, which a book hasn't 
we have we haven't digitalized yet and one word is which we have digitalized it now humans are quite good at recognizing those words so if we put that word which it knew yeah, you know you it knew before it will you, it let you in but other word which you put it will understand that yes humans have translated it and it will give the translation of that word and like if many people give the same answer to the, the same question we have got the translation so like this we are helping by just proving that we are not a robot we are also helping to digitalize thousands and millions of books and one one thing which i want to tell you is that in 1903 man flew for the first time and in 1969 just you know 65 years 66 years later we went on the moon this happened in just one man's lifetime this happened because of the telecommunication industry because of the communication and because of the global collaboration we did but this internet is so fast and is so big than the telephone the telephone network so what makes me wonder is what will we do if we can make put a man on the moon in just 66 years of flight research what we can do with this technology and this really amazes me and to end it all i just can say what i just i wanted to repeat the metaphor which i began with that i cannot remember all the people i want to thank because there are so many numerous people on the internet but it is like i cannot remember all the meals i have taken <laughs> though both of them really make me thank you Thank you.